David Douglas Duncan, what were the years that you were out in Vietnam? Well, I started in 51, and again in 1953 with the Foreign Legion, and did a story that predicted the loss of Indochina nine months before Dien Bien Phu, and then I went back again in 67 and 68. This mm -hmm. shot's made in 67 up at uh, Pontian, up mm -hmm. at the DMZ. The DMZ. Mm -hmm. When you were there with the French, I was out there in 1954, by the way, and, and I had the feeling that the French rather regarded the press almost as an enemy. Did you have that feeling? No, you no get along with them fine. No huh? difficulty at all. No difficulty I at all. I the border of China. I worked with the Legion. I worked mm -hmm. with all the French troopers. Mm -hmm. Maybe it helped being a retired lieutenant colonel of the Marine Corps during World War II. Uh, probably. So there was a combat affinity. And Can you tell me about your pictures here? What others you have? Well, I just want to have, a, have the one. This one is 67, yeah. Contian. In Contian. This up at Quezon, up on the DMZ also, on the border of Laos. Now look, when you take a picture like this, does this, do you know this man or is this something you just grab? You know what his name is? John yeah. L. Lewis. Private John L. Lewis. Really? Sure. He looks like he was about 17, right? No, 18. 18 years of age, right? right? His good luck cards in his helmet, of course. And you know whether he made it through the war? He made it back. Good. Is he, he has a copy of this. One of, one of seven children. Uh -huh. He lives, his family lives in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And this? Is this? This is also up at, uh, it's a Contien, up on the DMZ, just after a night of intense activity, mortars, some rockets, and fog all around. What it's time a, of day did you shoot this for? Just at dawn. Mm -hmm. It's a bit, so, uh, you can, t nothing but just the face in the night, almost half night. There's a dawn. You remember his name? I never knew it. Never knew it. And huh? I learned it later, I think. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's always a toss-up. I very rarely ask names in a place like this. I'm just, sure. The faces, faces, faces. I wanted to get the simplicity of it all—the animal survival and the haunting eyes and uh, ration. I've got to ask you a question, and a lot of aspiring photographers prob would probably ask you. They say, what do you do? Do you go out and shoot a hundred or a thousand rolls of film and hope for the, the, the lucky negative? Well, I think I'm a better photographer than that. Oh, well, I, I'm, I'm sure you are. Like. A lot of luck plays a great role, of course. Mm -hmm. There's only one negative like that. That's it. Yeah. But uh, too many things are happening. There's no chance for a lot of retakes. You play, just keep mm -hmm. One or two shots. And this? Well, it's a kind of ironic photograph because it, uh, he's checked off. He's checked off the months of the, his combat tour. Yeah, they had to spend a year out there, did they? Thirteen not? months. Thirteen for the months. Thirteen yeah. for the army. Mm -hmm. And he's already checked off February, but I made this picture on about the 9th of February, '68. So I hope his his uh, pre <laughs> premonitions are correct. He got out of it all right. I don't know that he did. Uh -huh. But I hope that he did. He's a, mar he's it. a marine, right? These are all marines. All marines, huh? Yeah. This is Kason. Mm -hmm. This is every Kason. The uh, battalion mm -hmm. perimeter being held in Kason. Now, in this world of television, do you think the role of the still photographer has changed at all? The photographer, the kind of work that you have done and are doing. In fact, you wrote the book on. Well, I have a. There are two different things. One in television is a flow of images. Mm -hmm. And mine is something like, I come in and nail one shot. Mm -hmm. That's it. So you can make your camera in now. You, you can do wonderful things with your cameras. You can move in, you can zoom in, the helmet, you can pan down. I'm stuck with the, this is the full negative when yeah. I make my print. That's it. But you've made so, your statement, such as it is, and it's, uh, it's very powerful, right? He, he's made his statement. If, lucky, if, I'm, if I'm lucky, I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. captured some of his mood. I don't know what he's thinking about, but uh, I captured some of the mood of the man. But uh, no, I, I, it's a very simplistic approach. I, I've lived many years in the combat areas. I'm an absolutely professional photographer. I've had a lot of luck. I don't consider it an art. I consider it a, a craft. I'm a good craftsman. Mm -hmm. And it's the easiest photography in the world, a combat photography, the easiest mm -hmm. thing in the world, because there's no, uh, there's no resistance mm -hmm. to you. If you were going to the street, we're now in the Annenberg Center of Journalism here in USC. If you start to approach a person now with a camera, they're very aware of you. Mm -hmm. But uh, in this kind of place, he's dreaming his dreams. And he, he doesn't even care that I'm there. Mm -hmm. There's other things to preoccupy him. 
That's why I say it's very easy if you know your craft. It's a, it's a very simple way to bring back the reportage. You know, some of the print press and some of the television uh, reporters and cameramen sp have told me sometimes about the adversary relationship that developed in Vietnam between them and, and, and the military. Did you experience no, any of that? No, None at all. On the huh? contrary, I was up in these places that were very unattractive places. For a limited length of time, I was sharing their hardships. And uh, they, I was the oldest man on the hill, so mm -hmm. and, uh, they knew I was a Marine. I was very much welcome, on the contrary. They were a wonderful guy, they say. You know, in a place like this, the most treasured things are water and the sea ration can of, of, of fruit cocktails. Sure. Hey, Mr. Duncan, I'm so fed up with that stuff, that stuff. The fruit cocktail, would you take mine off my hands, please? Giving you the most treasured thing you had. Mm -hmm. And you can see I was dehydrating very fast. I was carrying usually three canteens. They were usually carrying three. They would add theirs to mine when mine were gone. So it's, a, it's a very special world. And it can't be shared easily when you're... I was listening with great attention to uh, Admiral uh, Stockwell this morning, who was in prison camp up in North Vietnam for so long. And the affinity between those prisoners, now mine is nothing as acutely honed or as, as uh, ingrained as his shared experiences. But it's, it's, it's much, you share combat with young guys and they're, they're special. Mm -hmm. and Mr. Duncan, you've been very generous with your time. I know oh, you have another yeah. appointment. Yeah. No, thank, thank you again. Please, thank, thank you. Good luck to you.